So once again, I, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, joining us in our webinar series here at the uh, AFI Institute. Uh, they've, you know, continued to be excellent perspectives and, and, and good insight um, in, into, uh, you know, the game that we all love. Uh, as, as I was just mentioning to our guys here before we started recording, you know, the, the good silver lining about these moments is that, you know, we've had, you know, the opportunity to really <coughs> you know, take in some, some, you know, very strong, relevant and, and true soccer stories, um, you know, from, from around Canada, North America and, and, and overseas. And, you know, once you, uh, you know, get the opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to, to speak and, 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 and take in information from, you know, people that just, you know, really live this, envelop themselves in this game and, and strive for excellence, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, a component uh, that, you know, is, 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 is important and, in anybody's development, not only from you know from the from the soccer side, but you know within their personal development and and their their personal relevance. Um, within our academy, we're we're blessed to have a lot a lot of players that you know approach uh, the game from from uh, continued you know pursuit of excellence, not not only uh, on the field but off the field. Uh, you know we 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 have a a good contingent of, of players that have shown. You know, academic excellence uh, as as much as as sporting excellence, and you know we, we always you know have dialogue and questions, um, you know towards Ivy League schools. You know that's one of the things that you know we always push within our players and and to say you know if this is you know what you're showing off the field as well, you know um, these opportunities uh, are, are are something that uh, you you should not pursue. You know you should not uh, just let bypass or or, or, or just get the chance. Um, but obviously, you know, we're, we're, when we get on the field, we're, we're, we're there 300 days a year to, to seek excellence on it as well. So, you know, from, from our standpoint, this conversation today just, you know, has me really excited um, in terms of just, you know, a, a good mix of the two, which, you know, setting the bar at, at, at a good, you know, high standard um, where, where this conversation is going to come from and a good high experience um, to, to sporting excellence. Um, uh, from from an Ivy League perspective, um, is is definitely something that uh, I, I think you know is is something we all look forward to uh, to sharing in, in, in the experience. And um, we welcome here Coach Charles Rodriguez, uh, coach at assistant coach at, at Yale, um, who's who in, is in in this first season, I believe. Coach Charles, you're in. Is is that correct? Correct. Um, at, um, coming off a fantastic season and you know a very you know, under a very, very tough schedule um, um, by, by all accounts, not only from, from an Ivy League standpoint, but, you know, playing outside of, you know, the Ivy League, uh, you know, when you look at the record, uh, just, just some tough, tough opposition, um, you know, all across the board. And, and just to see that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the results there was, you know, just, just make, fed into my story, uh, fed into Coach Charles's story, you know, and, and, uh, uh, his background before that, you know, comes from, uh, you know, prestigious school as well, Stanford University, um, and his three years there, back-to-back uh, -back champions as well. So, you know, I I'll let you introduce yourself, Coach Charles, as well. I don't want to pull too much away from it, but uh, definitely it's, it's an honor um, to, to, to have you here speaking with us tonight. We appreciate you uh, taking the time out and uh, look forward to it. Oh, thank you for, for setting this up. Um, Really excited to, to be on here and, and share with you all. Um, so yeah, I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, grew up playing probably since I was like 18 months old. I remember my dad kicking a, a beach ball back and forth with me. Um, I remember there's a, a photo back at, back at my house back then. So really in, ingrained in the sport, loved it. Went on to play um, at UNC Charlotte uh, had a wonderful four years there, and that's actually where um, I met uh, Julian. Um, and you know, kind of, that's one of the wonderful things about about the sport of of, of soccer or, or football, if you will, is you get to cross paths with a, with a bunch of wonderful people. Um, and I studied criminal justice and political science in college, and um, that was something that really interested me. Um, and I got drafted after that, played for a year professionally, and then I went back to school to finish my degree, finish my degree, and then I joined, um, I started coaching and then got into college coaching, 
I spent three years at Xavier University, which is in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, they play in the Big East Conference. Then from there, went on to uh, Palo Alto, California, uh, to Stanford University. And I was at Stanford University for three years um, and won a couple national championships there, coached some, some quality, not just players, but, but human beings, quite, quite honestly. And then, um, you know, decided to make a move to go to another prestigious university, as is Yale. And I've been here since mid, mid-July. Um, but yeah, happy, happy to, to, to share more as we, as we get going. And Coach, oh. was a little bit of background of, you know, how, you know, your, your memories of, you know, Coach Charles is, you know, obviously our, our network is, is, has been a strong one uh, over this time. And we always love to hear, you know, how these connections come about. Mm -hmm. Um. In true Charles fashion, he probably uh, downplayed himself a bit. You know, there's just so much more to say about him as a, obviously as a player, but also as a person. So uh, we first met, like he said, at Charlotte. Um, I don't know if you remember, Charles, but you he was the first one to reach out to me out of all of our incoming class of freshmen. Um, just randomly messaged me on Facebook asking me, you know, when I was coming in and if I was fit and all kind of stuff. And kind of weird to to get that right away from a person that you've never met before but it kind of uh laid the the framework for the the person that he he was which is why he ended up being the captain of a uh, of the team and, and led them to a national final at charlotte so you know i said a lot about him um outside of college soccer we we grew to be good friends as well um just a couple of weeks ago i got to see him say i do so you know again you know it's, college soccer and just soccer in general, you get to meet some amazing people um, and fortunate to have him as a friend. Um, from on the coaching side of things, you, you uh, introduced me or brought me into working a couple of the Stanford soccer camps, which um, I worked a lot of camps as a coach, college coach in Texas. And I'd have to say, as far as, uh, you know, the standard and the level of players, I think arguably probably one of the best camps in the nation easily. Um, and again, that's something that, you know, Charles was put in charge of running um, and uh, it was very well done. I was able to meet a bunch of coaches, even some of the coaches that I have uh, coming to speak on here. I've met through that network that he introduced me to. So um, a good friend and, and introducing me to those things. I've been able to kind of expand myself as a coach and, and meet so many people. So, you know, thank you for that. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, love to hear you talk more, um, and hear more about you. Cool. So what, what do, um, you, you want to know spe specifically, um, actually, actually on this, uh, coach Charles, I'd like to just chime in, uh, from the conversation you started about introducing yourself, uh, you said you, you got drafted and then after a year of playing pro, you went back to school. So I guess this kind of leads into one of my questions I wanted to kind of uh, get from you is, I guess uh, you hear it a lot, uh, especially in like basketball and at the NCAA level, uh, schools that go after like really, really the nation's best talent. Uh, coaches already get the inkling of like, if, he or, he or she will be a one and done. They're going to go pro or after just playing one year of college just to meet minimum eligibility requirements. Uh, I guess, does that same thought ever cross your mind when recruiting an elite player uh, in the game of soccer uh, under the premise that we've got him for a year or do we have him for his four years, obviously pending being academically eligible throughout the four years? Yeah, so I'll speak... Um on that relative to like, I guess how different schools will, will look at it. Um, so when I was at Stanford and then when I was at, um, or here at, at Yale, we're kind of going to stay away from a student athlete who might be looking to go pro within a year or leave within three years. And it's not as a, almost as a disservice to them because they are quality players, but it's also because it's, 
very hard to just easily replace that that player um, because of the academics for it. Because the recruiting process at these higher academic institutions, it's an arduous process because you you're a bit of a guidance counselor, uh, to be honest. You have to make sure they're taking, um, you know, here in the U.S., it's honors classes, taking advanced placement classes. You have to make sure that they're testing maybe SAT, ACT, and a lot of schools accept either one. There are some schools that accept only only some of them. Um, but you will have some schools that, um, you know, I could, I could name a few, they might get a player and know, okay, this kid, we're going to get him and we're going to give him for a year and we're going to make him as good as we can for a year, but then he's probably going to leave, but they can also replace that student athlete much more, much easier than, than we can. Um, just because maybe their academics are a little bit low, lower, or they have uh, a wider range to, to recruit from. Um, so you know, some of the, the places I've, I've been at, you just can't do it. Like with the, the snap of your finger, it unfortunately, it, it doesn't work that way. And then from a coaching standpoint, um, I really like the ability to kind of build a team and see how somebody comes in as a, a wide eyed 18 year old and how, how the, uh, he changes his sophomore season, his junior season, and then his senior season how he's fit into his body a lot more, how he carries himself in the locker room. I think that that part's fascinating where you truly get to build and or strengthen a culture relative to, to where your, your, your program's at. Yeah, that's from, from, from our standpoint, you know, it really falls in line into the inside of, you know, what we're looking for in this conversation today is that, you know, there, there is, you know, that, the, the, the one side of things of, you know, what, what you're looking for, but on the other side of things as well is, you know, what, you know, put you, you guys put down as pillars for a buy-in, you know, and, you know, uh, uh, regardless of the fact from, uh, as, as these are IVD school programs, you know, from the soccer side, they're, they're also very, very strong programs as well. And obviously, you know, with the national championship, that's without question. And, you know, you look at Yale's record as well. You know, these, these are very, very good football programs, you know, programs that, you know, have, you know, put down pathways uh, to players reaching, you know, the, the elite level of, of world football, right? So, you know, what are, what are, you know, some of those, you know, anchors uh, that you can see within players? And, and I think you, you mentioned it, a lot of it had to do with the human side as well, that, you know, go into these programs and, you know, uh, I can think of Jordan Morris is obviously a prime example you know, who has the ability to, you know, expand from the soccer side, which I think a lot of players do at the elite level, but are able to, you know, remain focused on, on, on the academic side and, you know, see that through. Yeah, so, you know, a, a high academic school, you're really going to go to that school to get the best of both worlds. And for, for us, it's going to be, okay, do you want to be a good player? Great let's make you as good as you possibly can. But do you want to be a good student? You want, you also understand that the degree is probably going to set you up for the next 30, 40 years of your life. Then you're going to have the help to, to do that. Whether it's from your peers, it's from the professors, it's from the amount of different, different resources you have on, on campus and, and advisors. Um, so Really, and I know Julian and I have, have had multiple conversations about this. I'd, I'd recommend reading the book um, Mindset. Um, and it's, it's one that how, how you frame things in, in order to encourage yourself to, to grow um, and, and whether somebody's going to be like, okay, you know, maybe the coach didn't play me today. I only played 15 minutes. I came off the bench. Are you going to pout about it? Or maybe have a conversation with the coach and try and be maybe mature about it and see, okay, there, there's no, there's no question. It's, it's not easy to not play, but maybe you can find out what, what do I need to do to get on the field? Um, or, Hey, can I watch film? Maybe there are some, some high schools nowadays or some clubs that do record games. Maybe you can, you can um, watch, watch film with a coach. These are, these are things 
even when I was coaching at Stanford, I was coaching two, two club teams when I first got there. I, I would watch film with, with players. Um, and some of these, these guys, and, and I was coaching a, a club that um, one of them is now playing Division One soccer, but the rest were going to play Division Two, Division Three, And, you know, they all had really good grades. Um, they all wanted to go to a school like Stanford. They all wanted to go to Ivy League schools. Uh, and from an athletic standpoint, it wasn't going to work for them, but they understood that, you know what, playing the sport could potentially be a pathway to help them get to, to school. And you have a few of them that are playing division three soccer now and, and credit to them. It's, you know, they wanted to, they wanted to work for it. Um, and, and you don't have to be a, a Jordan Morris to, potentially forward your pathway in in playing in, in college. I think there's a there's a spot for everybody. I mean you've got 200 division one schools, just about the same amount for division two, and then you have about over 400 division three schools. So there's a lot of opportunities for for student for student athletes to play. Nice. I think it's important, you know, for for all players to know um, you know there's different pathways to to get to playing college soccer, right? I think I've heard, I've been to multiple camps where I had the coach say, you know, there's a school for everyone, um, which is true if, if they do what they need to get for you, right? Not everybody needs to play D1. Um, it's just doing your research and finding a school that works for you. Um, but for you, Charles, I think you're in a unique position at Yale and Stanford where you get to, you get to choose or you get players who are very well um, organized and uh, from an academic standpoint and also athletically they're very gifted um, and not only do you get those players you know at Stanford you've had a lot of success winning the two national championships um, and at Yale they're coming off their best season in the last couple of years and you went undefeated at home which is amazing right so from I think even being in an elite environment like that you have you know your players who tend to struggle a bit, whether it's getting on the field or in the classroom, even at that level. So what would you say, you know, from, in your opinion, out of the, uh, the players that are really successful, both in the classroom and performing at a high level at a school like Yale and Stanford, what are some of the, the characteristics that they, that they have that allows them to be, um, you know, perform at an optimal level in both settings? I, I'd say the, the ones that, that stick, that I guess pop out would be, they were great human beings to be around. Um, they were so well-rounded when you, when we would get on an airplane to go, to go travel, you would, you would actually talk to them about things outside of the sport, talk to them about their family. You talk to them about books. And that was, that was one thing that I've, I've always, really kind of admired for for those student athletes but then when you put a ball between them they were going to rip your heart out and compete and i think that's something that the ability to have that switch and want to be better than who's going against you and i think a lot of that comes from the the culture that i guess the program or the, or the coaches instill is you can a center back and a forward can go at each other and make it difficult for one another and forward should celebrate when he scores and the defender should be happy when he makes the forward upset and if they're both doing that they're going to show up the following day and they're going to be one percent better than they were the day before so I think creating an atmosphere where competition is the goal and then you coach within that is going to instill an environment where people want to challenge themselves. People want to improve. People want to, to, to push each other and, and truly know, okay, we get in the locker room or we leave the field. We're, we're brothers again. We're, we're sisters again. Um, and that's probably been the, the biggest thing that, that I've loved is you'd see, how great, great of friends they were off the field. And, and at times 
they would absolutely kick the shins out of their teammates. But it was just because they wanted to be the best on the field. And as a, as a coach, you, you love that. Um, and so, you know, with recruiting or, or watching a 16, 17, 18 year old um, kid, I think that the game is more physical. And so if somebody can give contact, but and somebody can take contact and keep playing, I think that's something that's, that's impressive. Because you have players who who want to be on the field or want to be visible when the game's all pretty and when the game's slow and everything's um, acute, if you will. But you also want to know, okay, is this player going to help us win a game? And is he going to, to, to compete in order to make that happen? Um, so that's why I kind of, I, I use the, the analogy of the, the center backs and the forwards who are going to go against each other. They should be competing, but it's going to be in different forms. Mm-hmm. that's that's uh i i get that that the competition that you gotta kind of breed internally between your team their coach charles and then obviously that that elevates everybody's game but uh yale being an ivy league school i wanted to kind of also touch on just the the academic side back to that um uh the demands of an ivy league program just on the average student going there is so much that it, it can be very overwhelming. Now you've got a player that also has to, you know, perform on a football pitch uh, day in, day out and balance the academics. You mentioned briefly, there are a lot of resources. Could you kind of give a, a more detailed look into what kind of resources are available to these uh, uh, athletes on the soccer team or any other sport at a program like Yale? Yeah, so all, all of these, these schools, and, and especially, you know, when I was at Stanford and Yale, and I know the, the other Ivy League schools, you have, when you get to school and you're going to declare a major, whether it's going to be economics, it's going to be political science, whether it's going to be some form of engineering, you're, you, you're going to have one advisor who's going to help you potentially pick your classes. Then you're also going to have another advisor who might be specific with just your team and then might work with maybe four or five other teams um, within within the university and then you're also going to have so your your group so every every student that comes in as a freshman you're going to have like a peer group who are other students who have been in their shoes so people who want to study business or who want to want to study some form of engineering, you're going to have the opportunity to meet with those who are two years older than you, three years older than you with, because they, they, they're doing it or they're taking classes. Now the, you know, Yale currently, like we've got, so our guys have kind of put together a list of classes for um, what to take and what not to take. And starting off as your, your first year, because you're right, it, it can be a lot. And I think my, my biggest piece of advice I'd probably say is anybody's first semester of college, it's it encourage you to figure it out and not overwhelm yourself. And then, you know, your second semester, you can say, all right, now I'm going to take X, Y, and Z classes because I know the load I took last year, you know what, I could have done a little bit more. And I was also in season. So that's, that's probably the other component about being a student athlete is you have your different workloads in the fall and the, the off season. And so, you know, you'll have students who will actually take more classes like right now than they do in the fall, just because you're on the field just a little bit less. And so you can afford to take classes. So, you know, and with that, you've got, so the time management component that, that is so impressive is um, we don't have to really harp on the guys or kind of really knock them over the head to make sure they're studying. It's, they know, you know, they're going to go back to their hotel room when we're on the road and we know they're going to be studying or, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll have snacks in my hotel room and the guys will knock on the door and they'll come in with a book they're, they're reading. Um, that's just, just, just what they do. Um, and we also know they're, you know, right now, like we'll have phone calls with our players. Now, a lot of them are playing, are playing video games with each other and that's how they're keeping connected. And so, you know, it 
the end of the day, they're still going to be young men and want to want to connect in, in different ways. So um, I think you have that balance of getting that help, but also being a being a young a young human being still trying to figure out the world as well. From from the academic side, you know, a lot of, a lot of the players you know, that we have that are that are high performing, you know, if we have a you know, a guy or a girl in our in our academy that is, you know, in their high eighties, you know, they those fill a lot of the traits that, that that you touch upon. You know, they're they're self starters, they're they're accountable, you know, they're they're coachable, they're they're very focused and, and, and lasered in. And you know, those those skills definitely transfer on the field, you know, uh, without a doubt we 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 would all agree as coaches. And you know, that's that's definitely one of the reasons we're real we we're excited to talk to you today is just you know having that reference point as well just from from the soccer and, and, and just being you know a high performance program, um, you know at your time in, in Stanford and, and you know at your time here now at Yale, you know what were some of the you know footballing pillars right like that 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 you guys would anchor yourself towards obviously after winning a, a national championship it's you know winning it again is is an anchor but you know from from, from the overall soccer side, there's a lot of guys that are, you know, academically, you know, good, very good, good people, a lot of girls as well. Um, but, you know, live and breathe soccer as well. So, you know, a, a, the programs, you know, that you're referenced to are, 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 you know, they would love to hear, you know, sort of how the approaches from the soccer side, you know, what are the cause, what are the, you know, the common causes taken on by the team and, you know, how, how they differed for you from, from, you know, being on one, one, one coast to another. Uh, in regards to the, the pillars, I would, I would say, again, having that, that growth mindset and knowing that just because you've done it once, it might be natural to maybe, okay, maybe I'll rest a little bit, or I'll come in at the same level of fitness this preseason as I came in last preseason, because last, pre last year we won and I, that's how fit I was. And it was a challenge to essentially say, okay, well, just because that's how we did things last year doesn't mean that everybody else that, that we beat, they're, not, they're running on the treadmill just a little bit faster to catch us. So kind of saying, you know, wanted to talk to the guys, well, now the target's on your back. Isn't that fun? Isn't that uh, a challenge to, to kind of have that? And almost relishing that and enjoying that where you were going to go into every single match and you were going to be the team that everybody wanted to play because you won the trophy the, the, the year before. And that was probably the biggest challenge as a staff. And uh, with, with the players, you know, they just said, okay, why could we not do it again? Um, and, you know, you understand how – how fickle the the sport can can be where a ball hits the post one inch to the left and it and it goes in and maybe you're knocked out of the tournament and so kind of having an appreciation for getting even better at some of these these details um so i'd say kind of challenged ourselves as coaches to be even better and, and more meticulous um as well as challenging the challenging the players um I don't know if, if that's the answer you were, you were looking for, if you'd want me to, to touch on anything else in regards to that. No, overall, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, you, you know, straightforward from what we were looking for. How have some of the objectives changed, you know, for, for, for you from the coaching side, you know, being at a program, you know, like Stanford back-to-back -back national championships to, you know, now coming into Yale, uh, which is, you know, obviously had a, had a great season and, 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 has performed against some of the, the, the top teams in the nation as well um, and, and, and been successful. So you, you have most of the country, you're going to start preseason about a week before these Ivy League schools do. So here it was a, a challenge in that everybody's opening weekend, you're not playing until the following weekend. So everybody starts their first practice on a Wednesday. You can't do anything with the team until seven days after. So, and most of these teams might have played two preseason games. You might be training twice a day. And so, you know, we're like, okay, we're going to be 10 sessions behind everybody. 
well, you know what? Let's be as good as, good as we possibly can. We're not going to waste any session. We were so meticulous with our time and our planning. Um, and, you know, we also challenged the guys like, okay, there's also the other schools in the Ivy League. You know what? Let's be the best team in the Ivy League at starting a week behind everybody else in the country. And so you finished a month into the, or you got a month into the season. So you finished September and you look at the record and you look at, you know, which team is kind of trending up and that, and that was us. Um, and a lot of that is credit to the guys coming in fit and ready to compete is that we didn't really need to spend any time actually doing fitness um, in the, in the sessions. We let the, the sessions kind of bring out the fitness, but never really said, Hey, let's put you on the line. We need you to do 10 more, 10 more runs to kind of top you off. Um, and then, you know, we just made sure, how we warmed up, how we cooled down, the nutrition the guys took in was, uh, we kind of, we, want, we wanted to plan for any, everything, quite honestly. Um, and then ice baths when after every single session, um, when, whenever we could. Um, so just little, little things like, like that. Yeah, it's great to see, you know, the, uh, you know, as the game evolves for, for us as coaches, um, you know, so does the, the evolution of, you know how 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 the the mechanism of the team you know evolves, right? And you know the the, the buy-in um, more and more now is is becoming from you know the bottom up as 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 opposed to the top-down uh, approach that you know a lot of us have have, have grown up with in, in in our development. And you know I, I think overall it's you know it's it's great you know when you can you you have you know that self-accountability within the group, you know getting players back in fit. Um, you know, getting the group ready to go, ready to compete, um, you know, having those necessary, you know, competitive components that, that bring out what's required. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, you know, the environment that's created and, and that's kudos to you to, to, you know, be referenced and recreate that on, you know, uh, both, both sides of the pond, uh, sorry, both sides of the, uh, the ocean there. And um, from, from your standpoint, having good reference towards, you know, uh, the recruitment process, you know, the scholarship process potentially, um, in, in, into, you know, uh, the Ivy League. What are, what are some of the things that, uh, you know, athletes, um, you know, when you're talking specifically about the Ivy League process, you know, may, may not know or, or, or may need to know um, in, in the context of, you know, the, the Ivy League? The, the biggest one would be, so in the, in the Ivy League, you cannot give athletic scholarships. So you do still division one rules operating under the the same guidelines for the most part, but you, everybody isn't getting, or nobody is getting athletic aid. Now what I will say is financial aid is very good for the, um, you know, the, the students or student athletes. So whether you're a student athlete or, or not, uh, a majority of, of people are going to qualify for some form of financial aid. Um, and then you have other schools that will be, you, you will have the athletic scholarships. And so I think that the biggest um, probably myth is that when a, a student athlete hears, okay, I'm going to get half a scholarship that that, that then equals my worth within a program. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people get wrong. It's sometimes, let's say you've got a forward and you're gonna be an incoming freshman and maybe you're not getting any money or you're getting only some money from the school. Well, it could be, well, maybe you're the fourth, the fourth forward or the fifth forward and you're the youngest one. Now, what's to say that that can't change? Um, so I think that's the, the, the biggest thing is that, you know, everybody thinks, okay, well, this place is giving me X percent and this pace is giving me less than that. So that one must like me more. Well, that might not necessarily be true. Um, it might be where that school's finances are and where that school or program is kind of put in their, their money with, within their program. So, I mean, I think for, for, for me um, in college, like I, 
I wasn't on a, a lot of money. I know some of my teammates were on a hell of a lot more than, than me. And I started and played pretty much every game, but, but one in my four years in college. Um, and, you know, I was fortunate that the money I was on kind of got bumped up a little bit going into my last year. But I mean, I would say there's going to be nobody who's really going to be on a full ride, maybe one or two people. Um, and I, I just want to be as, as helpful as possible. And you have some schools that some schools can stack money. And what that means is you can get some athletic aid and then you can also get them some potentially like academic aid. Um, now schools in the Ivy league schools like Stanford, you can't do that because from an academic standpoint, if you're getting in, that's essentially like a scholarship for the rest of your life because a degree from those type of places, it's going to, it's going to open up any door. Um, if, if you, if you do well and are diligent with your, with your schoolwork. Yeah, no, and we appreciate you, uh, you know, giving us, giving us that reference towards that. There's a lot of myths around that, um, you know, especially surrounding, you know, that Ivy League. Appreciate that. No problem. And, and Charles, just, you know, talking about scholarships and, and bringing in players, um, you know, specifically for freshmen, it's a, it's a very big, you know, transition jumping from high school to the college game. Um, I know I've seen that some players struggle, you know, being the best player in high school and their respective club teams to jumping into a college setting where maybe, you know, they're third or fourth on the ladder. Um, you know, for you, from a, from a coaching standpoint, um, you know, what, what do you look for in your freshmen? Because I'll you want kids to uh, come in fighting for a spot and be independent. And I know in high school and at the club level, obviously you have to communicate with parents um, and some boys come in and, and that kind of, I don't want to say it makes them weak, but you, when you're very de dependent on your parents, you, you don't, you know, have the ability to make decisions for yourself. So for you, you know, what are, what are some characteristics of a freshman coming in that you'd like to see? Um, in most of your players. Well, you, you kind of touched on it yourself, Julian, is you do want that, that independence um, from, from him and her. Um, you want them to know, okay, now you're, you're 18 years old. If you have a problem or you have an issue, then you should talk to me about it. Um, tell me what's, what's bothering you. Tell me how I can help. Um, and then, you know, there's going to be some times where, maybe a coach might give a cryptic answer. I mean, I've certainly done it because um, I think that's the, the point of, of coaching and, and teaching, quite honestly, is if you give them the answers all the time, they're never really going to learn or never going to grow. Um, so but if a player asks me, hey, why didn't I play or what do I need to do to get on the field more? Well, what do you think you need to do to get on the field more? Why do you think you're not playing? and see if they've actually, if they can come up with a, a, an articulate answer that maybe might pose an argument for them. Um, and I think that's the, that's one thing. The, the other one, it's that, you know, it's going to be new for them. And some people, especially if you're in Canada, you're probably leaving, leaving home, um, unless you're really going to go to some of those, those Northern schools and know that I think you're going to have a, a set, a family that is going to look after you. Um, you know, if you're in the right environment, I know, you know, you Julian, and then you had two of the other Canadian boys, like completely understood that you guys were away from, from your family. I know, um, you know, we, people here in America wanted to look after you. And I think you and other guys, you were invited to Thanksgiving at other people's places because you couldn't go back home and little, little things like that um, is that you are going to have people that are going to look out for you because unfortunately, you know, mom or dad or your, your family might not be able to bring you home, nor does it make sense to, to go home where you're going to be with teammates who can drive for an hour or two and go home and then come back. Um, and, I think that's that's 
the other cool thing about um, being able to to play, I'm, I'm sure you probably certainly uh, enjoyed that as did as did your parents know that you were you were being looked after. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, and that's what I was really getting at. You know, it's not. Uh, I think one of the best things about school was getting there and being able to be independent um, and make decisions on my own. Right, because coming back home, it just made me. Uh, that much more of a, of a young man um, and, you know, getting to, to meet new people from different states, from different countries, you know, it all bled into how I developed as a soccer player as well. So yeah, great answer. Thank you for that. Charles, we, we definitely appreciate you giving us some, some insight and opening up, you know, uh, in, in terms of some very, very important reference. And I'll leave you with one more question. Um, obviously, you know, uh, a, a person of your background is, uh, um, is, is probably, you know, 24-7 uh, in, into the program, in, in, into, a, in, into the development of, of, of the program and the team. Um, you know, where, where, where do you see uh, uh, Yale uh, going uh, next season uh, in terms of the program? Um, what, are, what are some of the objectives towards it? What are some of the things you're looking for um, towards the program? Well, I think we want to come out of this time better than we were going in it and know, you know, we are, we're kind of comparing ourselves against ourselves from last year, but also know, like I used the analogy earlier, there's the targets on our back from the rest of the schools in the Ivy League and, you know, kind of giving them the, the guys like assignments to grow and to challenge themselves like tactically and we've led different different zoom um you know kind of meetings for that that purpose and trying to see what we can add i think the the tricky thing is you want to be able to coach and teach more but in our environment you might go over something on the whiteboard and then you'd actually go train it on the field so you would take what's theoretical and then make it practical so now we're like, okay, we can give them 10 different ideas, but they're going to forget eight of them by the time we see them again. So can we hammer home one or two and then ask questions about it, get them to talk about it, engage them, um, and get, and then challenge them to go watch, watch different, different games, um, with, with what we're trying to, trying to bring out. Um, and so, you know, got um, a back and forth with a player sent me a, a game from from Germany that he watched that was actually similar to what we were talking about last week. And so that's kind of on my my to do list is to to analyze that and see what we can take from a, a, a Bundesliga game. Um, and I think you can you can still get get better. I know it's 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 natural to be um frustrated and kind of penned up like a like a chicken, but I think we we want to challenge ourselves and be like, okay, can we, can we grow a little bit, at least, at least tactically? Um, and that's probably the, the biggest focus for us right now. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, uh, you know, a unique time. Um, I, I think it, it's a time that uh, we'll, we'll never, you know, really come back to an experience, you know, especially within this fashion, but, uh, you know, it's, it's good to see, you know, um, elite programs echoing the same message that, you know, we have to get, you know, something out of this. I think we all can agree that it's a, uh, it's a little bit difficult um, just to hammer in, you know, a certain approach uh, from, from the group or just to instill certain identities um, that are, you know, still uh, that we can't anchor in on when we're going to go back on the field and, and, and sort of implement them. So, you know, continued success to you um, and, and congratulations on, you know, a, a great transition um, from, from a top program and, continuing uh, to, to set a high bar for yourself um, in, in your personal trajectory. I think it's definitely, you know, always, uh, always, uh, it, it, especially in this business, always tough when, when you come from such a, you know, such a high program is, you know, the, this game gives us a lot of highs, but, uh, you know, definitely always seems uh, the, the lows are always around the corner as well, but uh, you kept a good transition and, you know, um, these opportunities, you know, give us a, it was a chance to expand our academy and, and you know, you know, uh, grow in, 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 in fans of, you know, the people that we've come across. So we look forward to, uh, 
you know, continuing the connection and uh, wishing you the best uh, in, 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 in this time and, and going back to the season. Um, hopefully, you know, we can get into a good transition and you guys have a, another great year. Continued success to you, Coach. Wonderful. Gentlemen, thank you very much for, for your time. Hopefully you're, you're staying safe, staying warm, and, and all the best to your, your young players you have up there. Cheers, Charles. Cheers.